So what I've done is I've trapped the pressure inside this manifold gauge set so we can actually see what's going on. So here I've covered up uh, the other numbers so we can just focus on what I want you to see. And right now this needle is pointing to the very outmost number and it's right there at 150 PSI gauge. We just call it PSIG, but technically this is a gauge and it's PSI gauge, so it's 150. Now that number is the pressure on our suction side of our refrigeration cycle. So right past the metering device, through most of the evaporator coil, the rest of the evaporator coil, and the suction line all the way back to the compressor. If I get pressure anywhere in this system, it's going to be pretty close to the same. It's the same pressure, it's the low pressure side. But this pressure of 150 doesn't mean anything to me. What we need to do is convert that to a saturated temperature or a boiling temperature. And that's where this number comes into play. Here's an example of a pressure temperature chart, also called a saturated temperature chart. So in this chart, we take PSIG on this side and convert it to temperature on this side. So we found 150 right here. Here's our PSIG. And this side is our temperature. So we have 150 PSIG converts to a 52.5 degree Fahrenheit saturated temperature. That number is the number I need to go. So here's our temperature pressure chart. We have pressure and temperature, pressure, temperature. So if I scroll down and find 150 PSIG, that converts to a saturated temperature of 52.5 or a boiling temperature of 52.5 or an evaporator temperature of 52.5. So the pressure is going to be the same in the whole system, but that number is taking place right here through the majority of the evaporator coil. So if this is my evaporator coil, the majority of this evaporator coil would be at 52.5, all the exact same temperature. Here, there's about 75% liquid, 25% vapor. Here we got about 50-50. Right about here, we're at 100% vapor. And we'll talk about this next little section later on. But that refrigerant over here boiling at 52.5 degrees Fahrenheit is important. The refrigerant's boiling. It's changing state from liquid to vapor. It's absorbing heat. It is latent heat. The heat from the air leaves and goes to the cooler refrigerant. This pressure gauge just is a gauge to give us pressure so that we can convert it to a saturated temperature. Now this is an antiquated way of doing it, but I'm teaching you this method for several reasons. One, it's going to give you an appreciation for how the refrigeration cycle connects. Number two, when you take certification tests, they're going to give you a temperature pressure chart and you're going to have to use this chart to convert to answer all of their questions. In the field, nobody cares these charts. We actually use digital gauges now that actually have temperature pressure charts and apps. And we will be showing you how to use those. But I want to start off with understanding how to read one of these pressure temperature charts. So that pressure, even though I've taken it outside, represents my saturated temperature, my boiling or evaporation temperature inside. That's the key number. It's taking place right exactly here. I'll try to put a link in the video for where these charts are. This chart I like because it's simple one refrigerant. I have pressure and temperature. So we have this yellow line, pressure temperature, pressure temperature, pressure temperature, pressure temperature, all the way through. It's just simply one refrigerant, so it's quite simple to work with. I like to start out with this. It helps get your mind around it. But in reality, the temperature pressure charts you're going to be seeing are a little bit different. You're going to look at something like this. In this case, we have multiple different refrigerants. We'll use this page. So here is going to be our temperature degrees Fahrenheit. So here's another example of a temperature pressure chart, but this one has multiple refrigerants. This is available from ESCO Institute, which is one of the testing organizations for the EPA test. And I like their chart because it has a ton of information simple to find. On this side here, we have our temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Then across the top, we have all of our different refrigerants. The refrigerant that we're working with is R410A. So what I'm going to do is scroll down until I find 150 PSI gauge. So if we scroll down, we don't have 150. The closest thing we have is 143 and 156. So we kind of have to read between the lines, if you will. So if we take this number all the way across to our temperature side, here's our temperature, we're looking at being between 50 and 55 degrees. So we have to kind of read between the lines for the test. A single chart is more likely to give you more numbers, whereas a universal chart like this, you're going to have to look between the lines. So even though the number is not on there, on a test question, you would look for something close. In refrigeration reality, this would be fairly worthless because we don't want to be that inaccurate. On top of that, though, we also have an analog gauge set that's not known horribly great for their accuracy anyways. 
So temperature pressure, we find our refrigerant, in this case 410A, we convert it to a saturated temperature. Now that temperature is a real number. That temperature, again, is taking place in our evaporator coil. When I'm talking about evaporator coil, the inside unit, here's an evaporator coil, here's our picture. When you're connecting those two, so you see my squiggly drawings, you're thinking the evaporator. That number, in this case was 52 degrees, is taking place to the majority of this coil right here. Not the entire thing, but the majority of it. So no matter where you get the pressure, that converts to a saturated temperature and that's the majority of this coil.